Okay, toy companies, we need to talk. It's about this whole app toy business. Yeah, app toys, the little things that work on the screens of many smart devices that I actually went over a couple of times before. Uh, turns out they're not doing so well. Supporting my evidence is this little Wall Street Journal article that came out a while ago, finding that pretty much every single app toy was a dud. I imagine that the 10% that they say did sell were despite the app rather than because of it. You know, things like the Monster High Sweet 1600 dolls. I wouldn't be surprised if they also counted the pizza boxes that unlock augmented reality content too. Not even the app toy that unlocks the pigs as playable characters in Angry Birds could sell. That should speak volumes. So, of course, what do I see everywhere at Toy Fair 2013? More of the same. I saw app toys that replace your thumb, replace the graphics, replace the case, or they use the phone as a remote control, as the scope of a gun, or as a toy's face. All of the same stuff as last year. Even toys with apps just kind of thrown on. I'm looking at you, Mattel. No, the iPad's camera cannot keep up with that speed. I also discovered this product called Tech Recon, which I think is an exciting new product that has a chance to revolutionize the toy gun market. But they just had to cram in an app. That app is going to kill the price point and it's going to kill the brand. Just you watch. Still, I can understand why so many app toys are being made. All of these wonderful statistics saying that 80-something percent of today's kids play with smart devices, that makes it a pretty appealing target and looks like an untapped market. The problem is that it is not an untapped market. It has been tapped by the App Store. There's enough entertainment in the App Store already to entertain children, and most people simply get their fix from there. It's convenient, and often it's even free. Most of the gimmicks of these app toys can be done with an app that doesn't use the toy or with a toy that doesn't need an app. If you can put out an app that requires $20 worth of hardware, but another app can give you pretty much the same experience for a buck, 99 times out of 10, people will go with the cheaper option. Don't forget, you're asking people to trust their children with a fragile and expensive piece of equipment. When parents lend their smart devices to their child, they're playing Angry Birds or watching YouTube while, most importantly, staying quiet and remaining within arm's length, not letting them run around playing laser tag in the woods. I mean, I found ad toys for babies. Babies! Slavering, chomping, barfing, pooping, dropping things, babies! Yeah, that's the sort of person you give your Galaxy S3 to. Which ties into my other point. If I can get the same level of satisfaction out of a toy that doesn't make me risk putting my $600 iPhone in harm's way to use it, I'll go with the phoneless toy, hands down. The perfect app toy is one where neither works without the other, using the abilities of a smart device meshed seamlessly with something physical. Nobody has managed to do this yet, but whoever does will no doubt end up very rich. The problem is that most app toys are worse than novelties. They're shackles to prevent people from playing more than the demo without paying money. Or, even worse, function just fine without the toy. While those 99 cent apps they're competing with lack such restrictions. Like I said, these app toys are just adding a barrier between the user and the experience and are completely counterproductive. Nuko and Scanimals are a step closer, with Nuko being inexpensive, kind of like in-app purchases in hard form, and Scanimals using QR codes, but they're only able to creep back up into being novelties. They're not really an experience, and I can still get plenty out of their apps without purchasing the product. Put simply, if you can make a playable demo of your app that doesn't need the app toy to work, you've failed. You might as well just unlock all of the content and toss your app onto iTunes for 99 cents so it has a fighting chance against the other app so it's not a total loss. Your app toy should generate an experience that only the merging of physical and app can do, not by force, but through fluid experience. Remember, it took the gaming market over 30 years to finally get that right. So in conclusion, this is a warning. It's a warning to buyers, it's a warning to toy companies, it's a warning to stores, and it's a warning to investors. Watch out for app toys. They are absolutely no match for the app store in their current state. The App Store absolutely thrashes App Toys when it comes to novelty, price, variety, and convenience. Until someone develops something that really only the merging of a smart device and a physical object can create, it's best to steer clear for now. This is Kodak signing off. <laughs>